Welcome to North Dakota Hockey with Dave Hackstall. I'm your host, Dan Hammer. On tonight's show, it's game week for UND. The team will open the season this coming Sunday with an exhibition against Manitoba. Later in the show, we'll check in with former UND defenseman Derek Forbert, who is entering his second season in pro hockey, and we'll sit down with freshman forward Austin Paganski. Coach, good to be back with you again. Here we go. Game week has arrived as you open the exhibition season Sunday against Manitoba. Yeah, we're finally getting close to that point of our uh, preseason schedule here. It's always nice to get into that game week after you've had uh, a long fall camp. You told us last week that you have arrived now within the last week where you and your staff can spend some time on the ice with the players. What type of things do you try to accomplish in that first week with your time on the ice? Well, we're limited in the amount of time that we can spend on the ice with our players, and we're also limited in the things that we can uh, try to accomplish with them. So really right now we're trying to get a feel for our players. We're trying to uh, make sure that we're doing everything with pace and with speed and with execution. Dave, let's take a look at the uh, early portion of your schedule here to begin the season. Manitoba will be here Sunday night, uh, Sunday late afternoon, 5 o'clock start for your exhibition opener. We'll talk more at length about that game coming up a little bit later. Then you open the regular season the following Friday and Saturday with a home and home against Bemidji State. Talk about uh, Bemidji State and kicking off the regular season with a home and home. Well, we're going to, you know, we're going to try to use that Manitoba game to build our team and to uh, continue the development of our team. And obviously we have to be ready to hit the ground running against Bemidji State, uh, who's going to be a real good hockey team again this year. They didn't have a ton of success last year, uh, but they've got their entire roster back and a real veteran team this year. The home and home first night here, second night there. Uh, uh, presents a, uh, a great opportunity, but also a, a great challenge for us. And it's real important to get off to a good start in our non-conference schedule. And the following weekend, you're right into the beast of the NCHC with a road trip to Colorado College. We are. We're going to go out to Colorado College, and uh, I'm sure we're going to see the uh, the effort and the energy of a team that's playing under a new head coach in Mike Havland out in uh, Colorado College. So uh, that, you know, as a first series within the NCHC is going to be a heck of a challenge for us. Always, uh, always a challenge going out to uh, Colorado College early in the season. And then the home non-conference series that's generating a lot of buzz. That is Providence here in late October. Providence is the preseason pick to win Hockey East. Your team as of last week, the preseason pick by the media to win the NCHC. This is a great October series between the Hockey East and your, and your program. Well, I think we knew that uh, as we came into this year, as we looked at our schedule, we don't need the polls to, uh, to tell us, you know, who's going to be a good hockey team or not. Uh, I know Providence is a veteran team, a very deep team, uh, and one of the top teams out east, and their full value for, uh, uh, for their choice as the number one team out yeah. there. Uh, this will be a great series. Uh, it's one that, uh, as we look at our schedule, uh, you know, you never want to look forward, and you can't afford to look forward to it. But once we get to that game week, uh, this will be a fun series to prepare for. It'll be a great series uh, for, their, uh, for all of our fans here in Ralph Engelstad Arena. Goals could be tough to come by in that series. Yeah, you're going to see two pretty good uh, net minders, okay. uh, two of the top guys in the nation going head-to-head. -head. That's a little game within a game. Yes. Uh, but obviously it's about an awful lot more than that. Uh, it's going to be two good teams uh, that will be well-prepared. Um, and uh, and excited to play yeah. in that series. So that'll take you through the month of October. A home and home with Bemidji State, the NCHC opener at Colorado College, and then back to host Providence here at the end of October. Coming up next year on North Dakota Hockey with Dave Haxtall, we'll preview the NCHC season fresh off media day this past Thursday in Minneapolis, and much, much more here on North Dakota Hockey with Dave Haxtall. North Dakota Hockey with Dave Hagstall on Midco Sports Network is presented by Sue Shop at Ralph Ingolstadt Arena, the Greater Grand Forks Convention and Visitors Bureau, Indian Triumph of Fargo, and by Hot Springs Spas and Pool Tables too. North Dakota carries the favorite role into the NCHC season, the second season of the league. Last Thursday at Media Day in Minneapolis, North Dakota learned that it had received 12 first place votes in the media poll, more than any other team in the league, three more than Miami. A year ago, Miami was the preseason number one pick, but uh, had a disappointing season. Well, Miami brings back key players like Austin Zarnick and Riley Barber and collected nine first place votes. But again, North Dakota was named on 12 first place ballots. St. Cloud State predicted to finish third. The Huskies picked up four first place votes followed by Denver, Minnesota Duluth, Omaha, Western Michigan and Colorado College. 
North Dakota goaltender Zane McIntyre is the only unanimous pick on the preseason all-conference team. McIntyre had a breakout season a year ago, winning 20 games and leading the league with a 1.99 goals against average. His save percentage just under 93%. Over the final four months of the season last year, there was no better goaltender in college hockey than Zane McIntyre. The forwards on the preseason all-conference team are Austin Zarnik of Miami. He led the NCHC in scoring last year. Johnny Brodzinski of St. Cloud State and also Riley Barber of Miami. Barber was second to his teammate Zarnik in points scored last year. The all-conference preseason defensemen are Joey Lalegia of Denver, last year's Defenseman of the Year and last year's Rookie of the Year, Jacob Slavin of Colorado College. North Dakota's Michael Parks and also defenseman Jordan Schmaltz were the top vote getters that did not make the all preseason conference team. Greg Anchors was at Media Day in Minneapolis, and here's more on how coaches feel about the upcoming league race. Yeah, thanks, Dan. Here in Minneapolis, UND is all the buzz as they are picked to top the NCHC preseason poll. But as you mentioned, there are several teams expecting to contend for the Penrose Cup this season. And like last year, many believe that this race could come down to the final weekend just as it did a season ago. Well, last year they picked us eighth and we finished third. And uh, it was just so tough, like you said. Uh, you, you need to stay healthy. You need uh, uh, good goaltending, obviously the most important thing. But uh, uh, in the in the past, it doesn't matter which league you're in. There's always a couple of teams that, you know, through you know losing players in the NHL or injury or whatever, you could always pretty much count on a win here and there. In this league, you can't. There's just no one. Uh, from top to bottom that you can look at and on your schedule and say, well, we should win two games there or, or here. And uh, that's just not the case. Does the media have Miami right this year, picking you guys number two? Oh, you, you guys have nothing right. I mean, I, the way I look at it, we might not finish last. So <laughs> uh, you might want to talk to Coach Axtell on that one, uh, picking them first. But, uh, you know, polls are what they are. Um, and – you know, you, you make an educated, uh, you know, guess, I guess, on uh, what things should shake out. And so we take that, um, you know, not with uh, anything but a grain of salt and make sure that we are responsible for proving you guys right. We're excited about the upcoming season. The experts, again, have picked us to finish seventh in the league. Last year we were eighth, so that means we've moved up one. And we surprised a few people at the end of the year when there were four teams playing, we were still playing. So, you know, we take it as a challenge to try and prove people wrong, and uh, we're working in that direction right now. Uh, it's a completely new system, and, and it's a whole new culture and of way of thinking. Uh, you know, I'm a pro guy. I'm going to have it. We're going to run in a pro way and uh, on and off the ice. And, uh you know, from nutrition to the way we, uh, you know, our video is conducted, how how we do everything. I mean, and uh, I don't know any other way. And, uh, you know, so, uh, you know, we, we've talked about that from day one with the guys. And, and we said that the pace of practices to to our video and to how we uh, conduct ourselves is, is going to be the pro mentality. Now the big question mark for our program is going to be goaltending. Uh, uh, Ryan Farragher leaves us, who, who was our number one goalie, and, and led us to two championships back to back uh, back to back years. And you know we're not starting a freshman goalie; we have returning goalies. But but uh, these goalies don't have a lot of minutes behind them. What excites me is that we have 22 returners, student athletes, uh, that are going to be back. So I know them. I only have to get to know five incoming freshmen, which is nice. Last year I had to get to know 26 new players. Um, so that excites me. And then just uh, the confidence I think our team. Uh, built and the trust we built in how we want to play in order to have success at the end of the year um, we're hoping carries over I just like uh, our, our our attitude I think uh, I, we've got good depth uh, I think through our forward lines and, and our, our back ends a little bit older so um, but you know in saying that uh, we know how strong this league is too and there was a lot of young teams and uh, again it's going to be a battle Dave, uh, give us your overall impressions of the league and the league race that's about to unfold. I think similar to what uh, what we all talked about last year, top to bottom, 
uh, extremely competitive. Uh, and, you know, I know the league polls are out and uh, somebody's picked to finish first, somebody's picked pick to finish eighth. Uh, but those, are, those would be awful hard choices uh, for me to put into order. Uh, outstanding league uh, with the veterans coming back into this league this year. Uh, some of the top players in the country uh, that uh, that will be uh, playing against uh, phenomenal year ahead of us in the NCHC. You carry the favorites role according to the media into the conference season. Yeah, uh, you know I think we're we're now 24 hours or, or more past uh, that poll, so I think that's kind of in the books. I think the next <laughs> time probably anybody will really pull that out is at the end of the year to try to match up and see uh, how close those predictions were right now it's time to go to work uh, and there's going to be a lot of work to do well sometimes preseason predictions are a dangerous endeavor a year ago Miami was picked number one in the preseason poll Omaha was picked number eight yeah certainly things didn't sift out that way yeah and, and you know I, I know sometimes uh, you know media members kind of uh, scoff a little bit as uh, you know as us as coaches downplaying uh, the the polls and things like that but honestly at this time of year the polls mean nothing we don't have a body of work in front of us we have a bunch of names on paper um, you know that uh, that are supposed to uh, be able to uh, to do something at, mm -hmm. at a certain level we have to go out and prove that um, and that's when I look at our team that's one of the things I like this is a group of guys uh, that has a group of leadership that has their feet firmly planted on the ground uh, that know what they are and know how hard it is to have success in this league. Well, coming up next on the show, Derek Forbert returns to Grand Forks just before departing for Kings training camp. Could this be the year that he breaks into the National Hockey League? That and more next here on the show. North Dakota Hockey with Dave Hagstall on Midco Sports Network is presented by Sioux Shop at Ralph Ingolstadt Arena, the Greater Grand Forks Convention and Visitors Bureau, and in Triumph of Fargo, and by Hot Spring Spas and Pool Tables too. Welcome back to the show. We continue our sessions of sit-down conversations with members of this year's freshman class. And with us is Austin Paganski, a native of St. Cloud, Minnesota, prepped at St. Cloud Cathedral, most recently played with Tri-City in the United States Hockey League. Austin, how are you doing? Good, how about you? Good. How's your first couple months here in Grand Forks treating you? It's going well. I'm starting to get into a ritual around school and around campus and now at the rink, so it's all going well. And I'm really excited to get the year started. Yeah. Tell us about uh, growing up and playing hockey as a youngster around St. Cloud, Minnesota. Yeah, well in St. Cloud there are a lot of outside rinks to be able to play on and I was fortunate enough to uh, grow up in a neighborhood with a very uh, educated hockey player and he uh, kind of took me under his wing and kind of got me skating on his rink outside his house so I was very fortunate to be able to grow up in a neighborhood like that. Oh, there's something about learning skills on the outdoor rink, isn't there? Oh yeah, it's kind of, it's a different world out there on outside rinks but it kind of carries into uh, the real game, so it's really cool. Person that you mentioned, is that one of the people that were influential in your real early years of learning the game? Yeah, for sure. He really took me under his wing. He was the one who really got me on the ice for the first time and kind of just taught me the fundamentals of skating and kind of kind of got me started with the game, so yeah. thank him a lot. All right, let's talk about your experience at St. Cloud Cathedral a little bit. Uh, at, at, talk about your development and your prep years. Yeah, so I started at Cathedral as a freshman and that was a big jump coming up from youth hockey to high school. So. We had a single A school. It was uh, not the best competition in high school hockey, but it was very, it was a good transition. And I played there for three years, and as you said, I played for Tri City my senior year, but it was a good development stage, and I had a great coach of Eric Johnson. He really took me under his wing also and developed me as a player. What did you learn about your game, about your development in, in your time at Tri City in the USHL? That's uh, a, a lot different than high school. It's kind of a grind. There's a lot of games, a lot of hard work, and if you think you owned one league, <laughs> definitely, there's definitely not another league, so it's got to keep going and keep working. All right, you're uh, you're a big guy. You would describe yourself as a power forward. Yeah, a power forward grinder. Uh, I like to be the first one on the forecheck and kind of use my body to shield off opponents. Yeah. Why North Dakota? You obviously had interest from a number of other Division One programs, but why North Dakota? Uh, as a young kid, I actually played for the Junior Sioux here at North Dakota, so that kind of got me initiated with the uh, North Dakota tradition and. It's the coaches here are unbelievable. They already have already taught me a ton. 
and just the tradition and excellence here. And obviously, I would like to take my game to the next level, and I feel this is the right place to do that. Yeah. Your roommates with Nick Schmaltz, and uh, the two of you have, have been teammates before these days at UND. Tell us about that. Uh, it's great, especially playing with Nick Schmaltz. Just playing with him kind of makes you a better player. He's just unbelievable. He can make things happen out of nothing. So. Just a uh, great experience being able to play for the USA with Nick Schmaltz. It's just, just a dream come true, so it's amazing. Were you ever line mates in international competition? I believe we were line mates for a yeah. tournament or so. So obviously I think I did really well at that tournament because I was with Nick Schmaltz, so it was awesome. <laughs> what are your expectations for this freshman season, your personal expectations, Austin? Yeah, I really haven't thought about it too much. Just kind of get into the lineup, do what I can to push other guys, and hopefully I can get a spot in the lineup too. And uh, see if I can help the team a little bit. What kind of learning curve do you expect making this transition uh, to college hockey? Yeah, well, it's definitely going to be a lot different than junior. So every day you got to come to the rink, to the workout room, prepared and mentally prepared just to uh, get better. You are aware of the culture here because of your days with the junior Sioux, but since you've been here now full time, what have you learned about the program and the culture? Uh, there's no days off. You uh, come to the rink ready to go and you're not leaving until you shoot all the pucks get all the reps in the weight room, so it's just hard work day in and day out. Yeah. How would you describe uh, preseason conditioning here that you took part in? Yeah, the Ironman Challenge, it was a good deal. It's a lot of exercises and uh, competitions against all the teammates, so it's kind of a good uh, stage to see where you line up against the other teammates. I suppose you're pumped, ready to go here, get the season going. Oh yeah, I'm ready to go. All right, Austin, good chatting with you. Thank you. Good luck your freshman season. That's Austin Paganski, freshman forward, and we're back with more next year on North Dakota Hockey with Dave Axel. North Dakota Hockey with Dave Hagstall on Midco Sports Network is presented by Sue Shop at Ralph Ingolstadt Arena, the Greater Grand Forks Convention and Visitors Bureau, Indian Triumph of Fargo, and by Hot Springs Spas and Pool Tables too. National Hockey League training camps are underway and a number of former UND players are involved in camps including Derek Forbert. The former UND defenseman is entering his second season of pro hockey. Forbert a first round draft pick of the LA Kings in 2010 is highly valued by the Kings despite being the highest drafted player from 2010 who has yet to play a game in the National Hockey League. Forbert played 74 games last season with Manchester, the Kings affiliate in the American Hockey League. I think just my consistency. I think, you know, you play so many more games in there than college that, you know, you have to be ready every night and you're playing three games a week and you got to be ready to go every game. So that was that's the main thing for me was coming to pro. Forbert admits he needed some time to adjust to the more demanding game schedule and faster pace of pro hockey. And when might he make his NHL debut? Well, the Kings are a veteran team, and at the blue line, they have a couple of players who are past 30. So in the near future, a spot figures to be open for Forbert, who could be joining another former UND player, Matt Green, in the Kings' decor. Yeah, I mean, obviously, they have a, a really good team right now and, you know, a really strong decor, so... And yeah, I mean, some of those guys are getting kind of older, so I just need to keep refining my game in the American League. And, you know, hopefully when I get that chance, I make the most of it. So we ended about 220, so definitely put on some weight. Good weight, I hope. But uh, yeah, I feel good. I feel strong. So I'm excited. I'm excited. I mean, I've done a lot of good work with them over the summer, and, you know, I had a good year last year. So hopefully it works out. We're back with the coach next to preview North Dakota's exhibition opener against Manitoba. North Dakota Hockey with Dave Hagstall on Midco Sports Network is presented by Sioux Shop at Ralph Ingolstadt Arena, the Greater Grand Forks Convention and Visitors Bureau, Indian Triumph of Fargo, and by Hot Springs Spas and Pool Tables too. Dave, Sunday afternoon, 5 o'clock here at the Ralph. You get the season going, an exhibition game against Manitoba. What are some of the goals as you take a look at the exhibition game in terms of personnel and what you want to see? Well, every year I think it's a little bit different going into this game. Um, but, uh, you know, for us this year, it's just going to be, number one, having the opportunity to play a game uh, after being on the ice and uh, so much practice, so much uh, play against one another. It's nice just to get out and play a game. But we want to try to establish the structure of our game. Uh, we want to try to establish 
uh, you know, the speed and tenacity of our game, and that's something we have to work through through that 60 minutes. Uh, and obviously, also, we're going to be looking at combinations uh, that we feel may work for us early in the year. You can afford to play a lot of players and afford to look at a lot of combinations in this game. Well, we will. There's a balance there between uh, allowing some chemistry to, to, uh, to come about uh, with the balance of looking at different things. So we'll try to find that balance as we go through that 60-minute hockey game. You know, the real key is to come out on the, on the far end of that healthy uh, and with some good information in terms of uh, combinations that will work and help us uh, be successful in our first series against Bemidji State. Dave, you should take a look at those combinations and project them forward this season. How much does chemistry in the past that has been developed between certain players play into the combinations that you look at? Well, I think it'll play a significant role in certain cases. Uh, no question on the blue line in a couple of instances that will play a role. Uh, up front, we, we definitely have combinations of two uh, that we know have worked together in the past. Uh, but don't forget, uh, you know, we've got some young freshmen coming into the program uh, that we are going to give opportunity to. Um, they're good players. Uh, they're going to add to the competitiveness of our team, uh, and we have to find out where those players fit, as well as uh, some other juggling yeah. that will go on. Here we go. Time Here to get go. back behind uh, the game bench. Absolutely. And ready to roll. Uh, I think we're all ready to do that from top to bottom. All right. Sounds good, Dave. Good luck this Sunday against Manitoba. We'll have the game for you live here on Midco Sports Network. Join me and Scott Kobranski and Katie Hale Sunday afternoon at 5 o'clock as UND opens the season with an exhibition game against Manitoba. Dave, we're back next week to uh, review that game and then look ahead to the regular season opener against Bemidji State. Look forward to that, Dan. That's it for this week. We'll see you next week for another edition of North Dakota Hockey with Dave Hacks. Stop.